speaking of shooters, he's uh, Dame Lillard, Bucks point guard, eight-time NBA All-Star, had a win last night and uh, beat the Sixers. Got the Suns coming up this weekend. How would you uh, rank the range that Caitlin Clark has? How would I rank her range? Yeah. I would put it up pretty high. Um, seeing as she shoot a lot of those shots off the bounce, she's being defended hard. It's one thing to shoot from deep, but I think shooting it like off the bounce in traffic, in big moments, consistently as she is, I would rank it pretty high. And I'm sure that she was inspired by players like you and Steph, some of these great shooters. But that's a – it's tough for a coach to go, hey, go ahead and shoot wherever you want to, I would think. It is. It is. I think um, even when I first got in the NBA, you know, my first NBA coach, Terry Stotts, would get frustrated with me shooting deep shots. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> I think as he saw me working on it more and more and more, and it started to become a more efficient shot for me. And I was able to get it off quick. And I was able to make it in big moments, like I said. Um, I was able to make it well defended. Um, I think he started to see that it, it also stretched the defense out. They had to play me further out the floor, up the floor. And it just gave us more room to operate, you know, and to run our offense. And our, our team benefited from it. Do you practice? How do you practice the kind of off balance or somebody in your face? You know, anybody can stand and shoot and, and probably make a few of them, but to do something that it's going to be a real game like situation, how do you practice that? Uh, I think it's, uh, I do this, this thing called foundation shooting. And it starts, you know, from mid range where I'm, you know, shooting without jumping. You know, I'll start off without jumping, then I'll start from a, a dipped position. And then, you know, my trainer would be like, go, you know, and I just have to shoot from like the dip position with no wasted motion, no momentum. And then I'll do that with a fade and then I'll add a bounce to it and then pause and then fade. And you just keep working your way out, you know, to the three point line where you shoot without jumping and then you shoot without momentum. And then, you know, sometimes I'll get in a dip position and I'll get on one leg and do it. And I just keep building you know, from mid-range further and further out. And I think it makes you a stronger shooter. Um, and then you just become more and more confident from doing that all of the time. And then you start to do it off the bounce. And I think it's just the, the reps after that. Is the three-point shot good for the NBA? Uh, I think it is. Um, you know, it makes it, it harder to, to defend, I guess. You know, it puts the defense at at the offense's mercy um, and, you know, where we are right now in the game of basketball, you want a fun game, uh, you want an entertaining game. And I think when you got so many guys out there that can shoot the ball, um, you know, you got to you got to uh, account for guys further out. And that opens up the drive that activates the help side of the defense, the low man on the defense. And it just creates, a, I guess, a more entertaining game, you know, for fans to watch. Um, but I also think on the flip side, it can it's changed the game a lot, you know, because it's running gun, people firing threes. You know, you look at some of the best shooters of all time, and they were shooting three threes a game, yeah, four. And now you got guys shooting twelve per game and ten per game. Um, so I, I can't say that it's the best thing, but I think it makes for a more entertaining game, higher scoring, um, guys getting more points, uh, more. I guess, uh, well-rounded skill set for players. Now you got, you know, dudes like Wimby out here, <laughs> do step back threes and one leg threes and stuff like that. So the game is, is, is constantly evolving. And I think the three point shot is a big part of that. What do you make of Victor Wimbayama? Man, <laughs> I think he's special. <laughs> like <laughs> when he, when I first started to see him, I was like, you know, you all, the first thing you think is hype. You know, like I, I could see that he was clearly a good basketball player. But, you know, it was just so much hype around him that you're like, man, you know, he's so tall and long and, you know, um, the game is so fast. How is he going to do in the NBA? And then you see like he got like a little twitch with him, even though he's, you know, tall and lanky. He moves quick, you know, it's fluid. He's doing things you just haven't seen somebody do at that size before. You know, I think. We've always been extremely impressed with Kevin Durant doing it at, you know, 6'11". 
Now you got to do seven five that's <laughs> doing the same thing. It's just getting crazy, man. But I think uh, I think Wimby is special, and I think um, the, how competitive he is is what surprised me the most, and that's what makes me think that you know very soon I can see him being the best player in the league. How do you explain the Joker? Uh, I mean, I don't think it's really too much to explain. I think it's a, you got guys that you look at and you say, this dude is super fast or this dude is super athletic or this guy can really shoot. There are certain things about guys that you, you know, that jump off the page. And I think with Joker, he's just a great basketball player. Um, I've seen him be out of shape and dominate. I've seen him <laughs> in shape and dominate. I've seen him score a bunch of points. I've seen him... I've seen him, you know, uh, playmaking. I've seen him rebounding. You just He's just a great basketball player. Uh, we're talking to Dame Lillard. Uh, I was talking to Chris Mannix, who covers the NBA, and he says that uh, you talk boxing with him all the time. What, yeah. what kind of boxer do you think you would have made? Uh, I think I would have been a – I think I would have been a pretty good – I think I would have been a pretty good boxer. Um, one second. Like if, if you fought Jake Paul. See, I think if you – with somebody like Jake Paul, um, because I train, you know. I'm I'm always in the gym in the summer. I love the sport of boxing. Um, I think with somebody like Jake Paul, he's – I know how important experience is in boxing, you know, and I think he's got so much experience now where he's fought in these big events. He's been in – He's taking boxing serious. He's in a, he's in boxing gyms all the time now. Like he's taking it serious. So I think, um, you know, he's he's taking the route of a, a true fighter. You know, and anybody who hasn't had that opportunity, or anybody who hasn't, you know, taken it that serious, you know, as far as wanting to become a fighter, then you shouldn't be you shouldn't be mentioned with those guys. You know, I think he's doing all the things to earn the right to be mentioned with with fighters. Um, but for me, I'm not I'm not going to go barking up a tree of somebody that's considering <laughs> being a professional fighter when, you know, I I do it out of love of the sport and also just to know that I can properly defend myself if it comes down to it. Who would be the best – if I said I'm going to train this person to be a boxer, a professional boxer in the NBA, who would be your pick? If I could pick a – just like a spe- like anybody. Anybody just, is going to be in the ring. You pick the guy you're going to be in the ring, and you think that he would be the best representation of an NBA player who's going to be a professional boxer. I would take. Um, let's see. There's a lot of tough guys. Right? You should be able to no. I don't think it, it's tough guys, but I wouldn't even look for the toughest guy. Um Okay. How about Draymond? Would, How would Draymond do in the ring? You never know. I think Draymond <laughs> has the I think Draymond has the the like he's tough he's tough mentally. So I think Draymond could, you know, be a, a good fighter, but that's only part of it. You know, I'm trying to think of like the body type, you know, everybody would probably be like, you know, LeBron, but that's like a big dude. You want somebody that's kind of like wiry, light, um, you know, that's stronger than you would think. Um, tough, tough mentally. Um, that could just be, that could get to a weight where they could be dangerous as well. Like, I think I would be, a, I would think I would be a, a good one. I think, um, mm, would you ever get in the ring with Tyson? Hell no. <laughs> I don't care if he was 68. I <laughs> that, is, that is the correct answer. Uh, yeah. Help me understand what it was like that first month of the season with Milwaukee to where you guys are now. What was the uh, biggest difference? Uh, I think the first month, just trying to uh, settle in, you know, with um, – my life, you know, more than anything, yeah. just, you know, I got three kids. 
Um, I've been in Portland for 11 years and everything was just set up around me perfectly as far as my family to where I could just focus on basketball and then my life that's most important to me was was laid out perfectly. And then coming here, um, leaving my kids behind, leaving my family behind, uh, I knew what I signed up for, but it's still a, a major adjustment. Um, so that was a that was tough. And then just being on a new team, trying to find my place within this team, not having like a summer of being with the team. It wasn't like I came here like in free agency or I got traded in the middle of the summer. It was like a couple of days before training camp. So um, just trying to get comfortable, just trying to find my place. You know, it was tough in that first month. And I think now uh, we've had enough time to where it's like, OK, I see where. Uh, I could impact this team. I see where I can help this team. Um, I see the journey. I see the difference in the journey for me here than the the last couple of years in Portland and what's important. And um, I think that's the biggest difference is not looking at um, our season and myself uh, the way that I that I did in the past. You know, now I know that it's a, a much longer journey. Um, it's a, a different type of goal. And um, being invested in that has been like the biggest help and difference for me so far, like this at this point in the season. Uh, I got Doc Rivers here, and Doc wanted to say something to you. Hey, Doc. How you doing, James? I tell these guys, you got to give me 48. Give me 48. Sometimes it takes more than 48 if we go to overtime. He can take whatever, he can take whatever shot he wants. Yeah, I let him shoot green light from the parking lot. He can shoot wherever he wants. But you got to give me 48 <laughs> if we're going to get where we're going. Thank you, Doc. <laughs> How would you rate that? He started off strong, man. It did. It, it tailed off. Oh, it tailed okay. off after, okay. after about 10 seconds, man. It's tough to, it's tough to <laughs> retain that voice. Yeah, that's a coach's voice there. And you probably hear it way too much, far more <laughs> than you want to. But uh, It's actually not – as bad as 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 people like make it out to be in person like i haven't even in person like obviously you notice his voice but it's not it's not that bad uh yes yes doc it's 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 bad it's it's bad i i, <laughs> I should probably see somebody i think i got like nodules in my throat uh hey dame uh <laughs> thanks for joining us and uh good luck the rest of the season Appreciate it, man. It's always good to be on. That's uh, Dame Lillard.